Well, you know the story. But my question is, friends, why did you pray to God? Why did you cry unto God? If you are going to kind of say all this stuff and throw all this out and still say this thing to Moses, to Aaron, and then you're still going to repeat the same thing. Why did you bring us out? Why did you pray at all? You know, sometimes uh, we are afraid that my husband, this is the way she is acting, and this is what he's doing. And then we come to church, and then we pray, and we say, the Lord is going to give you the victory, this and that. And then after the prayer, we get back home, and then the same thing we used to do with that husband that brought the trouble originally. After the prayer, we just continue to say exactly the same thing. How is the man going to change who doesn't come to church when the woman, the wife, coming to church and coming to convention does not change? The attitude does not change. The expression does not change. And uh, the way you always comport yourself and the way you always react whenever anything happens, that's the way you always do before convention and after convention. If we hear in all these messages, if we cannot change, how will the man that is not hearing the message, how will he change? The change will begin with us. And when the temptation comes to start talking like we used to talk and acting the way you was used to act and complaining the way we used to complain, we'll say, no, I'm a changed man. I'm a changed woman. That will not come out of my mouth again. I'm not going to have that repeated acknowledgement again because things are different now. I said things are different now. Faceless expression acknowledged repeatedly. Now I'm looking at number six. What is fear? Fierce emotions arousing restlessness. Fierce emotions. Uh, you know, when, when you think about fear, it's just an emotion. It's not actually what is happening. It's your own emotion. Because the same thing can be happening in different, uh, in, you know, to the same, to different people. Other people are calm. Other people are resting. Other people are just looking on their scene. Well, uh, the Lord knows how to, how to take care of this. And other people then become restless. What's the difference? It's your emotion. Your emotion. And uh, if you will take care of that, and you know sometimes how you take care of that, let's say, for example, an emotion is rising up within your heart. It's like, you know, this is happening and this is happening all of a sudden because this is like your regular stuff, your regular thing and what you always do, the way you always react. You know what can change that? You make a move. Either you turn, either you stand up, or then you distract yourself, or you just take up the scriptures and read aloud, just anywhere, just to interrupt the thought that is coming to your mind because it's the thought that is bringing that emotion. The way we say it is that motion alters emotion. You understand? That is, you stand up or you walk briskly or you run or you jog or you do something very different, change your, the position of your body. And it says, and I've told you, motion changes or alters emotion now let's look at mark mark chapter 4 in mark chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 35 and you'll see here the fears emotions arousing restlessness we're looking at mark chapter 4 verse 35 and the same day when the evening was come it says unto them let us pass over Onto the other side. That's enough. Let us pass over onto the other side. Brothers and sisters, can you look up uh, for a moment? Uh, you know, if we think a little, just think a little, not pray too much, not fast too much. Yes, we can pray, pray, and we can fast. You ought to fast, but not too much. What did I say? Not too much. But you reason. Now, Jesus said, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And we have not won those converts yet. And Jesus said, heaven and earth may pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Whatever happens between now and the time he makes us fishers of men, those things cannot kill us. Those apostles should have thought like that. They should have thought, he said, follow me. I will make you fishers of men. And we are not there yet. And then he said, let us pass over to the other side. Let's pass over to the other side. Whatever happens between A, point A, and point B, because he said so, 
He's not even gone to heaven. He's right there in the boat. Whatever happens, we know we're getting to the other side. You know, if we just reason a little, all this fear that we have, everything will vanish away. I said it'll vanish away. And that's the reason why we need to you just relax and look at the word of God. What did he say? What has he told us? And because this is what he told us, and we know that even if heaven and earth will have to pass away, the words of Christ will not pass away. Look at that verse 35 again. The same day when the evening was come, he says unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. Well, I'm going to look at that verse again. Let us pass over. That is different from pass over. That is, let us, or see with them, I said, well, see what them. Hey, do you remember what the Bible says? How Christ will die. In Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, I'll put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. Thou shalt bruise his heel. He'll bruise your head. That's crucifixion. Do you remember Psalm 22? They pierced my hand and they pierced my feet. The only way Jesus could die is by crucifixion. And he said, let us pass over to the other side. It's in the boat. This boat cannot sink because he cannot die by drowning. And he's with us here. And because he's with us, we know there's no way the storm or the wind or the waves will sink the boat. But you know, if we don't reason and sink, will be afraid unnecessarily. Do you understand why Jesus slept in that boat? Because he knew. He knew what had been written concerning him. And he said, what has been written concerning me will be fulfilled. And because of that, he could rest. Now let's go on verse 36. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind. And the waves beat into the ship. So that it was now, it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship. What? Uh, praise the Lord. You know, if you sleep when you ought to sleep, and you don't allow anything to disturb your sleep, you will be free from high blood pressure, hypertension. You know, it's uh, thinking too much, and then we have this uh, heat in the head, and then when you are not sleeping enough, you have fatigue, and then you have well, sleeplessness, you are going to also have forgetfulness. Your mind is not working well. And then you don't remember the right stuff and the right thing at the right time. And then you become absent-minded. And you say, they are after me. No, they are not after you. They are not after you. Number one, you worry yourself to sleeplessness. And then the sleeplessness caused this. And then when you are not sleeping at night, you know, thoughts will be coming. Because the mind, once you are awake, the mind is always at work. It's always generating, generating ideas and thoughts. And they're always negative thoughts. And those thoughts will compound the problem. But if you just sleep, I don't need pills to sleep. All you need to do is to understand we cannot drown here. Jesus said, let us pass over to the other side. And we're getting over to the other side. And everything he has ordained concerning you, everything is going to be fulfilled. And there is no enemy and there is no storm and there is no mountain that can change that. If you know that, you will sleep when you ought to sleep. You'll walk when you ought to walk. And you'll do what you need to do at the time you ought to do it. And there will be no fear at all. I said there will be no fear at all. Uh, you know, sometimes someone will say, I've decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. I've decided to be like Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. To be like Jesus means not to worry. To be like Jesus means to sleep when you ought to sleep. To be like Jesus means not to keep awake unnecessarily because of storm or because of trouble. And to live your life peacefully is the Prince of Peace. Tonight, that will begin in Jesus' name. And then they came, and he was in the part of the sheep, asleep on the pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, you see that uh, people who are worried, almost worried to death, they disturb people who are peaceful. They disturb people who are sleeping. And I say, uh, the ministry of the pastor, you know, sometimes they say, Pastor, don't you care? We care, but we have taught you. 
we need to sleep also. If Jesus slept, Pastor should sleep. Praise the Lord. And then your phone is ringing at 2 a.m. And then you are wondering, who is that? And then you pick up the phone. You look at it. You say, is this sister again? Then you put it down and say, I'm not going to allow this. Then you shut it off and then you go to sleep. Then after 10 minutes, the phone rings again. And then you pick it up and say, I'm not going to answer. And after 15 minutes, the phone rings again. And you say, if I don't answer this sister, I'm not going to sleep tonight. And then, uh, you know, you pick up the phone. Hey, sister, how are you? Pastor, things are bad. I'm almost dying now. In fact, I need somebody to take me to the hospital. I must get to the hospital right now. Hey, Pastor, please come. Please come. And then you get there. When you get there, uh, what's the problem? I just had a dream and they were chasing me. <laughs> and that's why you disturb our sleep. Praise the Lord. But you know all those things we can take care of. We can take care of and just open the scriptures. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want and then he makes a way before me. And then it's at the table. And then if you just read that, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy stop, they comfort me. And it says, even in the midst of those things, I will not fear. And surely, 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 goodness and mercy shall follow me. How long? Why do we fear so much? And we read that every time. And so they woke him up. And look at that verse 30, 38. Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it ye have no faith? Look at what followed. Tell me, verse 41. Is that the proper reaction? They feared exceedingly. I thought they were, I, I saw I thought it would be and they loved him exceedingly. I thought it would be and they honored him exceedingly. But when even the miracle happened, now their fear now increased. It became it was great fear before. Now it was exceeding fear. They feared him exceedingly. Now can you think of people fearing Jesus? They stopped fearing the wind. You know, when this thing becomes a chronic thing in our lives you'll find something to fear even the people we ought not to fear you you will fear them because it has become something chronic i pray god will deliver us what is fear then fears emotions arousing arousing restlessness number seven is failure expected and rehearsed failure expected and rehearsed it's like I can never make it. I can never do it. And you say that yourself every time, and you rehearse that every time. It brings fear. When you repeat those uh, fearful things, terrible things to yourself every time, fa failure expected and rehearsed. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 51. Isaiah chapter 51. We're pointing all these things out so that when this is show up and they appear, you say, I recognize that, that the definition, description of fear, I will not fear that, will not come. And you shut the door immediately. Isaiah chapter 51 verse 13. It says in verse 13, and forgettest the Lord thy maker that has stretched forth the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth. And has feared continually every day because of the fury of the oppressor. As if he were ready to destroy. As if he were ready to destroy. That tells us there's nothing to fear in all those people. Because it says as if it were ready to destroy. I pray that as we get all these definitions and everything settled. All these fears will get out of our lives in Jesus name. We'll settle with the definition and description of fear. we we'll go to point number two. The divine declaration to the faithful. Divine declaration to the faithful. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 35. Isaiah chapter 35. We're looking at verse 4. Divine declaration to the fearful. Isaiah 35 verse 4. It says, say to them that of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Say to them that of a fearful heart, be strong and fear not. How do we become strong? The word of God is the bread of life. That makes us strong. 
The word of God is the water of life that we drink, makes us strong. And the word of God is like hammer, breaking rocks in pieces. And the word of God is like fire. When you have that word of God stored in your heart every time, it will give you courage. And then you think about the people that lived in Bible days and Bible times and what they went through. And say, I am not going through 1% of what those people went through. And if you compare your problem with their problems, you will not be afraid. You know, sometimes, uh, have you ever tried to do something? Let's say you have a little headache or you have a little problem in your, around your stomach. And then there are suggestions coming to you. And then it's making you afraid. And instead of, you know, just getting worried and anxious, you say, when is the visiting hour in the hospital? And then you go to the hospital. When you get to the hospital, you just visit the people and, you know, greet them. Then you will see cases that are much, much worse than the one you are trying to complain about. And you see some of those people still able to smile and able to say, thank you for coming. I appreciate that you come to visit me. You come out of that hospital, you say, if those people can be cheerful in their condition, as terrible as their conditions are, I think I can be cheerful because what is happening to me is nothing. Do you understand? We read in the papers and we see the things that happen. And we see what happens to, you know, other people, either a storm comes and, you know, devastates a, a whole region, a whole community. Or it may be that people have gone to, you know, the war zone and about three children of the same parents, they've been to war and they're all dead and gone. And their parents are still alive. And their parents are still breathing. And their parents are still living their lives. And they're not killing themselves because of that. Sometimes uh, one of their children has gone to school. And because of an erratic, uh, centric a child that carried a gun or knife, that child, one of the children, was already dead. And then they just brought information to the parents at home that this is gone. And eventually, the, those parents, they some of courage, they said, well, we don't know why that happened, but we're going to live our lives. And some of them are unbelievers. They do not know the Lord. And they sum up courage, and they still live, even with those calamities. When you think about what happens to other people, and what a fraction, one-tenth or one-hundredth of it has not happened to you, then you say, well, there's nothing to complain about. And on, on, when you think about it, I have God on my side, I have the word of God on my side, I have the Holy Spirit within me. And if that is the case, then I can live and I can rejoice in the Lord. That's why it says, be strong and fear not. We will not fear. I said, we will not fear. In that verse 4, it says, behold, your God will come with vengeance. Even God with a recompense, he will come and save you. If the people that do not have that promise, if they can still live a kind of confident life, I about those of us that have the promise of God that God will come. He will save us. He will definitely come. He said we should be strong, take courage, and not be afraid. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 8. Isaiah chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 11. Isaiah 8 verse 11. For the Lord spake thus unto me with a strong hand. And instructed me that I should not walk in the way of these people, saying, Say ye not, a confederacy, to all them to whom these people shall say, a confederacy, neither fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. Neither